dear students welcome back in the previous session we have discussed about the constant direct current and its physiological effects and the therapeutic effects and now in this session we are going to discuss about what do you mean by electrode diagnosis and what are the changes in um, electrical reactions so here what do you mean by electrode diagnosis electrode diagnosis is the study of electrical activity in motor units and sensory nerves when stimulated by electric pulses so electrode diagnosis is the study of the electrical activity in the motor units and sensory nerves when stimulated by electrical impulses which is known as electro diagnosis so normally it studies the normal and abnormal behavior of the motor units and sensory pathways when stimulated and the interpretation of its results help for the diagnosis and prognosis of the disorders of the neuromuscular complex of the locomotor system okay so now we'll see what are the changes which occur in the electrical reactions so when there is a disease or injury of motor nerves or muscles alterations or seen to occur in their response to electrical stimulation okay so the altered electrical reactions may be of um, considerable assistance in diagnosing the type and extent of the lesion so normally the reduction or loss of voluntary power of the muscle may be due to a lesion in the upper motor neuron one thing and a lesion in the lower motor neuron or any damage in the muscle itself okay or a fault in the neuromuscular junction that is here neuromuscular junction or maybe a functional disorder okay so the parts of the motor pathway which are normally accessible for electrical stimulation or the lower motor neuron below its exist from the vertebral column and the muscle itself so that is the place we can stimulate the motor nerve or a peripheral nerve we can call it as but we can't stimulate the anterior horn cell and upper motor neuron okay so now we will see how um this um, lesions that is upper motor neuron lesion lower motor neuron lesion or defects at the neuromuscular junctions muscle lesions and functional disorders how all these um, shows uh, changes in the electrical uh, reactions with that of the normal one and um, how Uh, the uh, what are the types of tests we are going to discuss separately but in this what are the um, responses um, we can see in the upper motor neuron lesion lmn as well as the at neuromuscular junction if any defect is there or in muscle lesion okay first we will see the upper motor neuron lesion so when there is a lesion of the upper motor neuron when there is lesion of the upper motor neuron there are no changes in the lower motor neuron or muscle okay that is in the accessible part of the motor pathway okay so which would lead to altered um, electrical reactions consequently 
will get a normal type of response which is obtained with electrical stimulation why because here uh, this from uh, lmn to this lower motor neuron to um, up to the muscle there is no defect is there actually only the defect is at the upper motor neuron lesion so once we will stimulate at this point what we'll get we'll get a normal type of response with the electrical stimulation although sometimes the nerve and muscle are hyper excitable and react to a lower intensity of current than that of normally required so that means even uh, this pathway is going to uh, excite that means hyper excitability can be seen uh during this upper motor neuron lesion and even still a lower intensity of current uh, is uh, required to stimulate the nerve and muscle um in the case of upper motor neuron lesion but the response is normal type sometimes only we can find this hyper excitability of nerve and muscle with that of the lower intensity of the current than the normally required so if you see the lower motor neuron lesion so damage to the uh, lower motor neuron may involve either the anterior horn cell okay or the fibers of the nerve roots fibers of the nerve roots and um, also peripheral nerves so that means so as we know that um the peripheral nerve so a uh, sensory and uh, motor uh, nerve fibers so which unite to form so this become, which comes out through the vertebral foramen so and this becomes the root value and it is divided into further dorsal and ventral isn't it so this ventral root which is going to supply so this becomes the root value so at the level of the root the injury may be occurred so our entire peripheral nerve is going to affected or lower motor neurons so if it is anterior side so then the person is having some motor problems so if it is um, a posterior horn cell then the person will have some sensory problems okay so that is the uh, different things we can observe in the lower motor neuron lesions and also lesions involved in the nerve fibers lesions involved in the nerve fibers can be classified into three groups one is neuropraxia axonotomesis and neurotomesis so the lower motor neuron lesions are classified into neuropraxia axonotomesis and neurotomesis so what is the thing happened here so the neuropraxia is called as first degree injury which is a condition in which uh, some bruising or pressure it renders the nerve so which is incapable of uh, conducting impulses past the site of the lesion that means here you can see so here this is the lesion of the nerve that means compression pressure is existing here so what happens so past so below the site of the lesion so the conduction is not carried out okay so that is the thing it is a condition in which bruising or pressure renders the nerve incapable of conducting impulses below the site of the lesion but in this case the damage is not severe enough to cause degeneration of fibers here degeneration of fibers will not takes place at the neuropraxia if the electrical 
reactions are tested on the affected muscle a normal type of response a normal type of response is seen okay and um, but there is loss of response to stimulus when it is applied to narrow trunk above the lesion so if you stimulate above the lesion you can't find the response but below the site of lesion if you can stimulate we will get the normal response here there is no degeneration of fibers below the site of the lesion so we are getting normal response so above the site of lesion you are going to stimulate if you stimulate what will happen so at this point it will have some compression of the nerve so the impulses will not carry out uh, through the pathway so we will not get any response okay so that is about the neuroproxia when you come to axonotemesis this is called as second degree injury axonotemesis this is called as second degree of injury so if you see in this nerve fiber there is no degeneration is taking place in the Uh, nerve fiber below the site of lesion this is the site of lesion below the site of the lesion we we didn't find any degeneration here so in the axonotemesis which is called as second degree injury which is liable to occur if the lesion is more severe okay so here the degeneration of the axons takes place so in the axon or temesis degeneration of the axon takes place the sheath of the nerve remain contact that means only the axon is going to uh, degenerate here you can observe this pic so at the middle you can find uh, the uh, only the axon uh, you can find this uh, dotted lines that is called as degeneration of the axon but the now sheath is in contact that means the myelin sheath is in contact in the axonotemesis only degeneration of the axons are going to take place okay so an example of this type of lesion may be observed in the radial nerve palsy associated with fractured uh, shaft of the humerus once the nerve fibers have degenerated alterations in the electrical reactions can occur so we can find all some of the alterations in the electrical reactions in the axonotemesis if you see in the neurotemesis that is the third degree of injury which is severing of the nerve sheath and fiber belt here both the sheath and axon is going to degenerate so in this both the sheath and axon is going to degenerate in the neurotemesis okay the fibers degenerate so here you can see the fibers degenerate below the site of lesion causing some alterations in the electrical um, reactions as axonotemesis so you can find um, uh the electrical reactions almost same as that of the axonotemesis below the site of the uh, lesion okay so the, the condition is however more serious as suture of the nerve is necessary before satisfactory regeneration of the nerve can takes place okay a lesion of this type would be observed if the ulnar nerve were severed by a cut on the front of the wrist okay all these types of nerve lesion may be partial or complete and um, there may be a combination of two of them uh, for example neuroproxia and axonotemesis this is the combination if all the nerve fiber supplying a muscle degenerate the reactions characterizing complete denervation are observed so while if only some of the fibers degenerate the reaction is that of partial denervation so normally 
um, in your nerve we are having number of fibers isn't it so if you see only um, some of the neurons have been cut so that means axonotemesis only for some of the fibers the fibers which are having uh, such kind of condition that is axonotemesis or neuropro these fibers will show um, the reactions uh, the effects of um, what you called as um, uh, axonotemesis okay and the remaining nerve fibers shows um, normal response that means this indicates that this nerve is partially denervated if the entire nerve is getting compressed or okay entire nerve is compressed or cut then uh, the reactions uh, we can find is complete denervation we can observe okay so the reactions observed in the lesions of anterior horn cells depend on the extent of the damage if the severity of the lesion is such that there is degeneration of the nerve fibers okay and the reactions of denervation or observed so when we will get the uh, reactions of de uh denervations or observed means here the anterior horn cells um uh, are going to damage uh, some extent or uh, extreme damage then you will get the um, reactions of denervation or the severity of the peripheral nerve lesion okay nerve fibers so then we will get this um, denervation reactions if all the nerve cells supplying your muscles are affected so then the reaction is that of complete denervation okay while if only a proportion of the cells are involved the reaction is that of partial denervation in less severe lesions degeneration of nerve fibers does not occur and the reactions are normal so that when we can see in the neuroproxia so complete denervation we can find in neurotemesis and partial type of denervation we can observe in axonotemesis okay so these are all comes under the lower motor neuron lesions and you have to understand well about this uh, lesions and the severity then only we can apply it. what type of uh, currents we can use for this such conditions for neuroproxia what kind of um, uh, current whether it is faradic type or we can use a galvanic or constant dc so in the case of axonotemesis so it is only partial denervation which kind of um, uh current is used okay in the case of neurotemesis which kind of uh, uh current we can the therapeutic currents we can use um to reeducate the muscle and to protect that muscle function so first you can understand the effects of this neuroproxia axonotemesis and neurotemesis then only we can practically apply those uh currents therapeutic currents okay next if you see the defects of the neuromuscular junction so if you can see uh, at the neuromuscular junction so occasionally uh, as the disease as in the disease like myasthenia gravis um there, there is a reduction of voluntary power is due to faulty conduction at the neuromuscular junction so faulty conduction that means uh, it can't um, properly release this uh, neurotransmitters okay so because of, at that junction um, there is some problem in the synapses then you will get this defects at the neuromuscular junction which leads to um, a variety of diseases for in that one example is myasthenia gravis so 
methods other than electrical stimulation provide the most satisfactory aids to diagnosis of such condition if you see the muscle lesions so if a reduction of voluntary power due to the weakness or disease of the muscle due to weakness or disease of the muscle and there is no degeneration of the motor nerve the reactions to electrical stimulation are of normal type but are reduced in strength okay so here you have to observe in the case of muscle lesions if the reduction of voluntary power is due to weakness so due to maybe the muscle weakness or any disease of the muscle and also there is no degeneration no degeneration of the motor nerve the reactions to the electrical stimulation are found to be normal type but um, uh, or reduced in strength okay and and also if the lesion is uh, so severe there may be a complete loss of muscle tissue there will be no response to electrical stimulation okay so this absence of response may occur in such conditions as ischemic contracture or in advanced stages of myopathies or may be due to fibrosis of muscles in long standing denervation that means uh, if um, the person is affected with the denervation if that person is not taking proper treatment which finally leads to muscle wasting and also which leads to fibrosis okay now once fibrosis then there is no uh response to that muscle myopathy is also the muscular uh, disease okay in that one also uh, we we can't find in only in advanced stages of myopathy we can't find um, the proper uh, response in that uh, muscles normally these myopathies are mainly uh, the lower motor neuron lesion types okay so this is all about uh, muscle lesions if you can see the functional disorders so here the functional disorders is loss of voluntary power may be due to hysterical paralysis so that means it's uh, maybe some psychological type uh, in such cases uh, there is no alteration in the electrical reactions there is because everything is in contact everything is in contact with the muscle but uh, the person is found to be loss of uh, his uh, loss of power of his uh, voluntary action because due to the hysterical paralysis so these are all the uh, different uh, kinds of changes we can observe in the electrical reactions of different conditions okay in the next session we are going to discuss about uh, how can we measure how can we measure um, the strength of the muscle um, by different methods that is called as methods of electro diagnosis thank you